if you had that much in the bank, you'd be in pretty good shape. Right? 4.12 <laughs> million miles of road. And the interstate system in this country cost, as of 2008 now, $500 billion to build. That road, the, all those roads. Now, I, I guess by now, eight years later, it's going to be more because, you know, the price of things always goes up. $500 billion, a half a trillion dollars worth went into building those. President Eisenhower, who happens to be the first president I remember, some of you might go back further than that, I don't know, some of you might not go back that far. President Eisenhower, he introduced the highway construction system back in 1956. Now, he did it for a few reasons. The potential for commerce, to be able to move goods and services across the roads and get them to different places in trucks. He did it for commerce. Makes sense. He also did it for military use. He did it for the expeditious, for the fast movement of being able to move the military where they needed to be in case of national emergency. And he also did in case of emergencies for evacuating, a way for evacuating major cities. The interstate highway system. That's what it was built for. Now some of these roads, you drive to travel on, and I'm sure you've experienced this, I know I have, when you have to stop and pay a toll. Some places you gotta stop when you're driving and they have toll booths. You gotta stop and pay a toll before you can go any further. But the road I want to talk about this morning, the toll's already been paid. These roads and these highways were built with tar and whatever they used, the different things they used, and the equipment. But the road I want to talk about was a road that was paved with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without blemish, without spot. Now we just talked about how much these roads cost. $500 billion. Mm. That's a lot of zeros behind that. But, but, the precious road that he paved is worth eternally, eternally more than that. When he gave himself for me and for you, the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. There's a road that's talked about sometimes that sometimes folks talk about in the Bible called the Romans Road. You may have heard of it. Yeah. Well, I looked up, I looked up some about the Romans Road this morning too, and I've got a little, I've, I've heard about some about it. It's in Romans, it starts in Romans chapter 3. We're talking about roads and highways. Romans 3.10 says this, as it is written, as it is written where? In the word of God, in the record that he left of himself for us, the record that he left of himself for us. The Bible. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. What's that mean? None of us are righteous. Romans 3.10 Why are we not righteous? For all his sin comes short of the glory of God. What's that mean? We've broken God's laws. We can't keep them. It's not our human nature to keep them. As hard as we may try to be good, moral, upright, clean living people, there's no way that we can keep God's laws. I've lied before. What's that make me? I'm a liar. I've stolen before. What's that make me? A thief. I've even used the name of the Lord God Almighty in vain in my life in the past. What's that make me? A blasphemy. I've looked on a woman with lust. What's that make me? An adulterer. Whosoever shall look upon a woman. I've done that. I'm a lying, cheating, thieving, blasphemous adulterer. And you know what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all the same way. Well, well, we know where that sin came from. We, all, we know the story of Adam. How Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the garden. He gave them one rule and they broke it. And when they broke it, that basically blew it for all of us, didn't it? Because that's where we all come from. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, 
And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. See, we're all the same. We're all, we're all the same. We're going down that road. There's none righteous, no, not one. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered in the world, and death like passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We're all in the same road. But, then there's a but that comes. The, the good part. But, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. He chose by his grace and his mercy to become one of us, to become flesh, dwell among us, live among us, yet without sin. Who? The Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. We looked at the world, right? God. Word with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. It goes on to say, all things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. We looked at that now. We looked at that picture of the world, which is a drop of a bucket. It's nothing. He counts the nations as man and less than nothing. That Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. His glory is the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. The way to that sin is death. The Bible talks about eternal life and eternal death. When He made Adam, He breathed into Adam what? A living soul. God breathed into him a living soul. That's always going to exist somewhere. He didn't breathe into the animal to live in the The Bible doesn't teach it. He wouldn't breathe into any rabbit or tiger or lion, snake or seal or anything of living soul. But he breathed into men living soul. And he gave us a conscience. He gave us a conscience where we know right from wrong. So we know. From the time that we're little kids, and we know that we're doing something we shouldn't do, that makes us responsible for our actions. That means we're in trouble. Now, when you're a little baby, you don't know. When you get a little older, however old it might be, three, it could have been two, I don't know, three, four. I don't know. But from the time we know that we've broken the rules, what do we try to do? We try to hide, don't we? Yeah. And then if mom and dad, whoever's taking care of us, ask us, what are we going to say? No. no, I didn't do that. That's right. Did now, good parents are going to do what? My did. The man that raised me did. Now, I wasn't raised in a religious family, and I've told this before. Wasn't raised in church, didn't go to church. I had a, I had a family that loved me, and my dad gave me something. So what do we got to do? What do we got to do? What the way of that is done? The way to that sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, what do we have to do? Hey, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning to you. Do we need to be religious? Well, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. If we if we just are religious people for the sake of being religious and doing good works, that doesn't justify us before a holy God. Because we cannot be good enough. We cannot be good enough in His sight to be justified to the Because He sent His word, be holy as I am holy. Didn't he? So what do we got to do? Pray and have faith. The word of God does say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Whosoever. That means you, me, and everyone, we're all the same boat with that sin. Pay attention, because it's in there. We're all in the same boat. But then whosoever will may come. How? By faith. How? By coming to him by faith. By doing good works? No. Because by grace are you saved through faith, and not that yourself. It's what? A gift of God. 
if you've never seen yourself and been able to see yourself as God does. What a sinner before you. Broke, broken his law. The way to sin is death. Eternal death is what the Bible describes as a literal hell. It talks about a man who in hell lift up his eyes being in torments. My stepfather raised me. I did too. He raised four little boys. But we didn't go to church or anything. Now I got saved when I was a late, late in my teens. I came to know the Lord. And I tried to witness to my stepfather and tell him about Jesus. But he never wanted to hear it. My stepfather, the man I loved and respected so much, didn't want to hear about it. He wasn't interested. He died when he was 59 years old. As far as I know, that man I loved and respected so much is still lifting up his eyes in hell and crying for somebody to come and put a drop of water on his tongue because he's tormented in those flames. The man I loved and respected so much to the best of my knowledge never came to Jesus Christ by faith, repented of his sins, turned from his sins, and trusted Christ and asked Christ, is in hell right now. He's been there for years. And guess what? He's never going to get out of that torment. Because that torment is sin. Last and ever. And folks, he's, God's given all of us here this morning, all of you here this morning, that maybe have never come to it yet. He's given by His grace. He's given you another chance to come to Him by faith today. Mm. By trusting the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. No amount of good works. No amount of being a moral person. No amount of being nice to everybody. No amount of trying to do the good things that you can do. Get into church. Be in a church now. You go to church every day. Go to church every day. Guess what? That doesn't make you a Christian. Being a Christian requires coming to Him by faith and being born into His family. You've all been born that one time, obviously. It's obvious we wouldn't be here. But in order to come into the family of God, you have to be born into His family. That's why He said we must born again. And it's like I'm sure we've heard before. You can't be almost born. Guess what? You can't be almost born again. You're either in or you're out today. I would ask you today to consider to consider what he has said about the precious blood of Jesus Christ came as a lamb without blemish and without spot and gave him something. He said, consider your ways. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to lift up Jesus Christ this morning. Well, I ask anyone here, anyone here, has never come to you by faith, Lord. And we have clarity in mind. All the distractions will be cleared from our hearts. That you would speak to hearts. Your word is going to do the work. Your Holy Spirit is going to draw them all closer to you. If anyone here has never come to you by faith, save them today. Show them their need for the Savior. Look, if there, anyone, you, know, you know, you can keep your heads bowed and eyes closed. If anyone feels like they, they need to know Him and come to Him by faith, I'd be glad to pray for you. Just lift up your hand. I'd be glad to see that. Any Christians here who are away from him, children who, 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 who come straying away from him, you can come back. You can come back. You're still in the family. You've still been born into the family. A wayward child can come back. I like to pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you too. Anyone. You can come back. I see that hand. I see that hand. Father, thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Lift up Jesus Christ once again and ask, Lord, that you, most of all, that your will would be done here. We know that you're not willing that any should perish, but also come to you. Save the lost. Bring the living children closer to you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.